Yes, episode 45. 45. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics, colon, and take a couple weeks off every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of a gritty reboot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last episode was great, by the way, and uh, for those of you who have already listened to it, I uh, the ending, I linked to a Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> Perfect, right? Perfect. <laughs> oh, good old Pepe Le Pew, who honestly was speaking better French than Billy Joel was. I mean, neither one were great, but Billy Joel was truly embarrassing and i had like five years of french and i can't speak i can list vegetables yeah and count to like 11. so but, uh, if you're having a conversation about 11 vegetables you are oh, sign me up yeah i will stop people on the streets of paris and that guy they'll think that guy's a native because it just happened to be yeah yeah about 11 vegetables Go by talking about 14 vegetables. I just pretend I'm not hearing you. Yeah, I was going to say the next somebody comes up with another vegetable, and that's when you're found out. <laughs> like, oh, no. Vegetable number does? Do? <laughs> 12? 12? I got to go. Wait a minute. You are not French. <laughs> Get him. Get him. Uh, a notorious a spy for 27 years. Finally <laughs> caught. In that very deep program where they teach you numbers. <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> Un, deux, trois, again. <laughs> yeah. And then they spray you with a hose. Yep. Hey, so you're you're a comedy man. I am a comedy man. I would share with you a thing that happened to me comedy man-wise that I know has happened. So uh, Mitch Hedberg has a joke about this, and I won't tell the joke, but I will just say it's a great joke. Um, you know how sometimes if you're a comedy guy, you'll think of a joke. Sure. But you will not be near a pen or a paper. Yep. And you'll think to yourself, I should write that down. It's a very good joke. And if you do, great. But if you say to yourself, I'll remember it. Of course, I'll remember uh, it. Sure. You are then so angry within a half hour. <laughs> really <laughs> yeah so i thought of a joke and i was like oh this is a great joke and i forgot the joke because i didn't get to a paper in time and just it just never happened and i was furious and i convinced myself tell me if you've ever done this i've convinced myself that this was the one oh this was the breakaway joke yeah this is the joke that would make me famous or that the joke itself would have a life of its own it's so good yeah uh, i was like and i was sad and angry firmly convinced that this was the greatest joke ever and then <laughs> that night i'm laying in bed and i remember the joke <laughs> i think that i don't think this is gonna make me famous oh no so here's the joke that I thought of, forgot, and really stressed out a day over because I thought, <laughs> and I might be overselling it, but I at least thought it was going to go into my act, and it's not even that. I mean, you oversold it to yourself. Oh, yeah, I really did. I was convinced. So here's the joke. Uh, Michael Jordan, great basketball player, we all know. You might not know this, but Michael Jordan Jr., plays basketball his kid plays basketball can you imagine how much pressure that is to be the child of michael jordan and to play basketball if i was his kid i wouldn't want to play basketball it'd be like dorf's kid playing golf Jesus. <laughs> and you thought this is going to launch me yeah a yeah. job that a people first of all you got to be our age to remember, at the yeah, you got to be like our dad's age, ideally. Yeah, and I think you got to be me to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
We somebody at work wrote a dwarf joke. <laughs> we read it. It was part of the closer look. I think it was Sal who writes the closer look, who is not as old as us and should know better. Um, but he read it. Seth read it on the Zoom with the, our research team is on the Zoom as well. And it's like two uh, young ladies who are under 30. Sure. Our writer's assistant who is like 25. And they all just had blank looks. And then <laughs> so we spent some time explaining to them why it was funny. And um, it went very poorly because it's not funny <laughs> anymore. Um, and then Emily, one of the researchers, went and she's like, you know what? I'm going to go look it up <laughs> and find some clips. And she was later that afternoon, like three or four hours later, we had another meeting and she came back and she was so mad at us forever thinking that that was even comedy. <laughs> oh. It's like, Wow, you made me watch. And we're like, no, we didn't make you. <laughs> but they're uh, they're like, like not even the same language to them. Yeah, and they're right. They're right. They're just right. Uh, it's funny because we, I think we've hit the age where now we remember Dorf wrong. Because I, yeah, we hated it then. Yeah. But we are remembering how much we loved hating it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We're remembering like nostalgic for our rage. <laughs> that's absolutely right. We got <sighs> like, oh, Duncan on that was so great. Yeah, I and love weird. It. How weird that it existed, and it was one of those things too at the time. Like, I have you seen this clip of? What's Adam Sandler's buddy who's nuts? Rob uh, Schneider. Yeah. Have you seen the <laughs> clips of Rob Schneider doing like some Christian or something comedy thing? Oh, no, I have not. It, it's not funny, but, it, but you can see the people laughing. So it's that peculiar thing. And Dorf was like that. There was this thing where you knew that there were people who were paying to have these cassette tape, tapes sent to their house. <laughs> And imagine that, by the way, anybody who doesn't know what Dorf was, Tim Conway, very funny man, yes. uh, le legendarily funny dude, had this late, uh, late part of his career thing where he put out videos of this character Dorf making golf jokes. And the premise was he had his knees inside shoes, so he looked tiny. Yeah. And he and uh, he had a funny mustache, and I think I've described everything about it. I think that's every single thing there was. Yeah, and uh, but anyway, the Rob Schneider thing is that too. He's talking about first of all, he's at a church. Second of all, they're making fun of people who are worried about COVID, which that's what you should do in churches: make fun of people <laughs> who are worried about the dead. In church, that's what you want to do. I think that was what Jesus always said. He said, um, the meek shall inherit the earth and uh, fuck them if they can't take a joke or something like that. I mean, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. He's uh, bad for comedy. Yeah. <laughs> but There's it's no weird way. watching the Rob Schneider thing because I watched it and I was like, I. this is fascinatingly not comedy. And yeah. he's He's a comedian. He knows how comedy works. Oh, absolutely. But if he did actual comedy, it wouldn't work there. Yeah. And then I do, he... I do think this is a bread, where your bread is buttered kind of thing. Yes. He realized he could uh, get some quick cash off these suckers. And yeah, it's the grift. Yep. Christian comedy, Christian rock, Christianity. <laughs> all, yeah. all pretty good grifts <laughs> you beat me to a delicious punchline because that's really <laughs> true it's like the money he's taking for comedy pales in comparison to the you know the grifter up front sure because it was one of those churches too it's a big like you know right of course yeah gotta have the sound system yeah <laughs> I remember growing up Catholic and my parents would be mad if like there was a guy playing guitar. 
like just before the mass once in a while for some reason they'd have like a guy playing guitar and singing a little jesus song and they'd be like too modern um and no sound system oh, yeah i mean those guys know what they're doing and like dorf was similar because <laughs> i yeah. think he got me he missed and made a ton of money doing that oh he did and harmless and of course it was dorf on baseball was later and sure you no know, and and i just find it funny too this is how old that was that when you ordered dorf it came on a vhs tape that's what it came yeah. on yeah, that's a, a, a terrible comedy delivery system. Like, yeah. like oh, I'd like to see some comedy. Yeah. Let me fill out a form and mail it. Oh, Lord. Or call this phone number, maybe. I know Dorf isn't necessarily funny and Dorf jokes aren't necessarily funny, but I stand by that this thing that just occurred to me is very funny. Picture somebody streaming Dorf. <laughs> that <was laughs> fucking funny that's fucking funny picture somebody going i'm, I'm already subscribed to disney plus i'm already but i gotta get dorf i gotta have my dorf uh what's it on it's on, it's on apple minus <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good oh so anyway that's the joke that's gonna make me oh have you ever done we should talk about Billy Joel at some point, but yes. have you ever had the thing where you are asleep and dreaming and you think of a good joke in your dream and then you wake up and write it down, still groggy, still thinking it's a great joke, and then read it later that day and it's just like a little haiku or something. <laughs> it doesn't yes, make sense. I have, and it's it nothing. Sense. It's nothing. not even related to comedy. Not even in the shape of a joke. <laughs> just be like a lady is walking down the street uh, with a hamburger <laughs> like, why did i think that was funny you know uh, don't you know what honestly though don't sell it short go back to that one good start yeah imagine a lady with a hamburger come on that's pretty good <laughs> it's a start it something needs to follow yeah i'll polish it yeah that's you that's the premise and then it's not the joke this is the premise yeah. <laughs> i did a show on uh, tuesday and uh it was amazing because it reminded me of all the reasons that i love stand-up and why stand-up makes me sad it was a great because <laughs> up until five minutes before the show there were three people in the audience oh boy and i was like uh it's gonna be one of those nights it's like well you're the guy who decided not to quit doing this so all right <laughs> and then table of four and then table of two and then i'm like oh and then it turned into an amazing show really great yeah and i did a joke that i developed in zoom that actually worked in front of normals it was great <laughs> oh fantastic and so rare yeah absolutely here's the song that i picked last of the big time spenders and here's an observation I think we've almost made about Billy Joel, but now I'll say it out loud. Man, there is not a cliche that he doesn't think is a good title for a song. <laughs> it's very true. And maybe and not even a cliche from his era. No. And maybe he's a genius for that because always a woman. Um, uh, what's another one? No, oh, I got stumped. <laughs> I got stumped myself with my own point. <laughs> That's fantastic. I can't I can't remember. Remember one either. I had like six before. All right. Uh, have I said last of the big time spenders? <laughs> um, easy money. Easy money. Ah, yeah, easy money. That's a good one. Um, still well, rock and roll to me. Still rock and roll to me. Uh, petty saved is a petty urn. That's one of his, right? <laughs> uh, he didn't take me up on the offer, by the way. I off I did tweet to Billy Joel that I could fix his French song. Oh, <laughs> no luck. No, I don't know if he's mulling it over. It might be a pride thing. Maybe he's yeah, gonna have one of his, sure. 
Maybe he's gonna have one of his friends talk to me first or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe he didn't block you, right? No, so maybe I'll get a call That's from like, basically a yes. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll get a call from Elton John is what'll happen. Oh, that might be. Or um uh, or uh, Alexa Ray. Yeah, Alexa Ray will call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh so I picked last of the big time spenders. It's gospel, right? That like, but not yeah. over the top. No, it's gospel y. Yeah. Um yeah and it has a clear-cut ending lovely i like and at the very end it's he's doing a gospely thing and there's a moment when i listen to listen to it thinking about it thinking about our show i was like i don't remember is this like an over-the-top gospel no no it's actually reasonably restrained yeah it's almost like, and then don't think there's like a choir or anything. No. It is sort of like, oh, we're about to have gospel rehearsal and I got here early. So I'm going to noodle around and make a little song. Yeah. Before, before everybody gets here. <laughs> yeah, this was a good couple decades before in the middle of the night. Yeah. Where That's when somebody showed up. Yeah, where you <laughs> leaned hard into the gospel. Oh, you guys are 30 years late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here I am. Well, All right. well I got lyrics. <laughs> and um, it's, it's also another example of his uh, not being ashamed to steal from Black culture. <laughs> sure. Which I, you know, I, I it's not great to rag on him for that considering that every rock and roll artist ever has done that yeah and also considering that that's just kind of how music works yeah i i don't i don't know i think it's just with music it's a little different there's every now and then somebody will go a little too far and then you could like iggy azalea yeah oh yes is a good example of a, and by the way she did a good job she had hit records but She's like Australian or something. <laughs> yeah. And very white. And she's like adopted a way of speaking. And I don't think she was raised in that in, in an environment that would explain that. Yeah, Sam, it seems unlikely. Like there was a girl that I knew when I was a kid. Her name was Shelly. She was very cute. And the first girl I had a little crush on when I didn't know what that was, like, like I was maybe seven or something. And I saw her years later as a young adult and realized, oh, that's Shelly. And it was funny to talk to her because so now she had a Latina accent. Oh, boy. She's not a Latina girl. but And it was heavy and thick. And I, and I realized, oh, yeah, because she went to this school, which is why she transferred to this other school, which is why I never saw her again. And that other school was in a particular neighborhood. So she made a certain group of friends and that's fine. That's great. Cause that's who you hang. And I bet you as an adult, she code switches all the time. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and that's fine, but I don't think that's Iggy Azalea. I think that was, she was like, I would like to be famous. <laughs> um, yeah. With the caveat of saying, I don't know for sure what her deal is. That is true. Very true. Um, but it, <laughs> it sure looks that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure i do are there examples of black artists stealing from white artists um i mean stealing is a strong word but you know what i mean um uh, yeah. uh darius rucker i was gonna say darius rucker <laughs> i was trying to think of his name yes <laughs> i mean does that count I love you. yeah that could, that's a funny thing because there are plenty of times when you'll hear a guy on the radio and you'll think it's a black artist. And later on, like Rick Astley, everybody thought was a black dude for the money. Right. Stuff. Oh, yeah. And for sure. Darius, everybody was like, oh, this pleasant little white guy doing his songs. So. <laughs> yeah. It's a blurring, I guess. It's more yeah. egregious yeah. Than sometimes than others. But. but I would love it if there was one artist who was over the top. 
Let, that would be great if there was a black artist out there who was just going like this, <laughs> offensively going, I sure do love my truck. You're like, ah, that is, come on. Come on, you're from Detroit. Country people don't sound that way all the time. <laughs> I would like them to steal from like uh, David Byrne or, somebody, <laughs> or they might be giants. It's really white nerd rock. Oh, that'd be the shit. Man, I would love that because so the Beatles, uh, Eleanor Rigby covered by Ray Charles is Paul McCartney's favorite version of Eleanor Rigby. Great. Imagine like a, a good cover of They Might Be Giants, you know? Oh, shit, that would be great. Yeah, jam. Blue Canary in the Alley by the Lighthouse, but really soulful. <laughs> wow. We might have something here. Yep. We have so many things. <laughs> we have so many, so many podcasts. So many do. podcasts, scripts. Uh, Oops. Song rewrites. <laughs> major song rewrites. I'm right about that French thing, though. Oh, yeah. I'm absolutely. We'll I am so damn right about that. It'll come around. Here's the other thing about this last of the big time spenders, and we'll actually talk about it in more detail, is because he doesn't go over the top with the letting the influences make him sound gospely the way he sings it, it mm -hmm. makes it a good song. It's a good little song. Because influence is one thing. Yeah. Um, appropriation is another. Appropriation, making fun of, um, <laughs> doing yeah. an impression. That's the, like in the French song, he was, he would have almost had to have done an impression right. for it to work. And that wouldn't have worked either. <laughs> he didn't have the French to pull off the impression. Yeah. And if he had tried to sound like a gospel singer in this song, it would just be patently offensive, probably. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, there's an SNL sketch. Um, finally, a black holiday movie for white people. Do you remember that one? I don't think I do. Yeah, it's very funny. And it goes, it has all your favorite parts. Women snapping peas. And there's women around cooking and breaking peas. And uh, and uh, a, someone getting evicted. But of course, it's a black guy evicting a white lady. Right. Um, you know, and Time Magazine says, finally, a black movie I understand. Ebony Magazine says, can't we have anything? <laughs> yeah. It's very, very funny. It's a, uh, uh, if you feel like looking it up, it's when Bobby Moynihan was still on the couch. Oh, okay. Love that guy. Great. There's a very good chance I was there and don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things where you really, SNL really benefits from when there's a live sketch and then a nice filmed commercial or something. That's a really good thing. Yeah. I, it's very well mixed nowadays. Yeah media wise i want to uh, say in the old days that even the commercials were live huh i feel like they've been films for quite a long time old old days like bassomatic bassomatic yeah I did there, some, there are still i think still some live yeah. commercials but they've really gotten it's i feel like half of the show is video now yeah or half yeah. of the, the comedy part of the show cecily strong in that blue something dog food commercial i think that was live and it's one of the greatest things ever <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I love i love cecily strong she is so good the best she is fearless in that an abortion thing oh my god god that was that's what this show should do and never does and never does you have room for it you have permission and they don't do it often enough no very rarely yeah, to the point that it's very noticeable when they do, because you're like, oh, well, what? I think that was something. Yeah, I mean, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Get, you know, get the balance right. But of course, she's brilliant. Yeah. Man, that show is all about the ladies now. I like that. That's such a funny thing to have happened to the show all for the better when you consider Jane Curtin to now. Yeah. Jane Curtin being told she's not funny by one of her... Uh, castmates who was a mm. very cool dude yeah 
Yeah. Big dwarf, dwarf fan, probably. <laughs> big dwarfer. So last of the big time spinners, I believe that's on the table. We're talking about that. It's a very simple song, and there's not a lot of extra instrumentations, right? It's mostly piano. Oh, pretty clean. Uh, I like that. I don't. I don't think there's a glass breaking or a motorcycle or no, no choppers. Or, you know, uh, and and I will say, really good singing. Yes, some of yeah. his singing, and it makes sense. It goes back to 1974, so he's a young man. It's you're going to get probably the best of what his voice ever had to offer. Very likely true freshest and cleanest not a well remembered uh remembered well but not how am i saying this people yeah. remember it nicely when they remember it but they don't remember it often huh <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say few people remember it but the ones who do like it well enough that they remember it fondly okay so now if i was to try to say that the easy well way do I say not well remembered, but remembered well, or is it not remembered well, but well remembered? <laughs> Which means that what we just said. Boy, that's a good question. That's what tripped me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if well remembered means uh, people have good recall or uh, they like it. Yeah. I don't know if that idiomatic expression means uh, remembered by many. I don't know if you'd say like, oh, 9-11 was well remembered. Because <laughs> a lot of people remembered it. Yeah, maybe the bo in both directions, maybe in both directions, it means the same thing. And that's what's tripping me up. Because maybe be. no matter how you say it, what you mean is it's something you liked or didn't like. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So is there any way we could fix that so that I can now say the thing shorter? <laughs> you could say well remembered, but not by many. <laughs> Something like that. I like that. We'll polish it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do a rewrite. That's from our other podcast. Did Jim have a stroke? <laughs> And also, it's colon things you can say in a comedy meeting. Right. We'll, I'll take care of it. We'll polish it. <laughs> I'll take some words out. Yeah. Also, things you can say in a in a in a porn. I'll polish it. Right. <laughs> but with a different, like, uh, attitude. Yeah. 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 You're like, oh, I'll polish it. Yeah. I like the other way too, though. In a porn, I'll polish it. <laughs> <laughs> begrudgingly uh, not re reluctant porn yeah not as a victim either just begrudging <laughs> oh that should be a genre of porn begrudging begrudging sex Man, All right. that might be my thing too now that i think about it that's great i was gonna say <laughs> uh, uh. might might as well be my thing that's Plenty of times when you're married that that's the kind you're having. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'll, I'll okay, do the first. anyway. Yeah. Enough well, moments of clarity. <laughs> Last of the big time spenders. Well, if money makes a rich man, then I might never make the grade. I'll be a small time operator if I just get the landlord paid. Well, that's true. That's a, uh, I don't know. Something about that bugs me. I'll be a small time operator if I just get the landlord paid. Yeah, that's not what small time operator means. No, yeah. But it's also just something about the phrasing because it almost that should almost be reversed, but you couldn't because of the rhyme. Yeah. Like, like if you were to say, if I were to say to you as a non in a non-poetic way, man, I bear. You know, a good day for me is if I get the landlord paid. I'm a small time operator. It's right. not, oh, this is how you qualify to be one. Right. You, just paying your landlord. You know, big, big time operators also do that. Yeah, they do. They will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it's a weird, yeah, it does. 
doesn't exactly mean anything. No, but if time is an indication of the wealth that I never knew, that I'm the last big time, that last of the big time spenders, because I've been spending time on you. Oh boy. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. It's a pretty simple turn of phrase, cute and clever. Yeah. Um, it is the second major cliche in <laughs> uh, big time spender, small time operator. Well, and you maybe even three spending all my time on you is just, I mean, it's, it's as far as the sentiment goes right there. It's really just like, yeah, time means two different things and spending <laughs> means two different things. <laughs> I was small time, but I'm big time. Yeah. yeah. Financially, I'm small time. Yeah. But with regard to actual time, I'm big time. I'm a big time. And also what we know of Billy Joel, I don't think that's true. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. I, think I do so. think he understands the genre well enough to know that his character has to be poor. Yeah. And uh, have landlord trouble. Yeah. But I think rich or poor, I just don't think he's a big time spender emotionally. So, <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, well, he might be like an irresponsible spender. Does that count? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, it kind of counts, though. But people who are too irresponsible never become big time spenders. <laughs> that's true. You because, have to do that first. Yeah. Then you can behave irresponsibly. Yeah, they don't acquire enough wealth to show off. They just go, hey, hey, look what I bought today. Well, I could buy that most of the times. Yeah, but I did with money I, I can't afford to spend. Yeah. Because I went to Atlantic City again. Okay. <laughs> one time, I went, our, our friend Graham Elwood, one time uh, we decided to drive from LA to Vegas in one day, gamble and come right home. We gambled money we don't have. And the drive home, very quiet. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, similar vibe on flights in and out of Vegas. Yeah. A lot of drunken revelry on the way in. And uh, a lot of uh, mad wives on the way out. Yep. A lot of thinking about how am I going to fix the, this thing? Yeah, this is bad. Yeah. This is really too close to Christmas <laughs> for this kind of thing. <laughs> Too close I could have sworn it had to be red. The next one had to be red. It was like six plaques in a row. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> uh, all right, you're up, my friend. Well, this is almost sort of a bridge already. Yeah. Uh, it takes time to appreciate. Lord knows. Lord, here's the Lord already. Uh, Lord knows that you can learn to hate it. I believe, because I've been there too. When it gets down to desperation, you make the best of a situation. I can tell. I've seen it through. This is a lot of nonsense. Yeah, it kind of is. I don't know what he's talking about. I think. And I don't think it's me. Yeah. I mean, he's not talking about me, obviously, but I don't think I'm the only one who doesn't know what this means. It takes no. time to appreciate. Oh, what? it takes time? I'm thinking, is it, does he mean appreciate like uh, interest? Is he another, doing that? Another word that can be about ladies or money. Is this all words that can be about ladies or money? Oh, funny. It takes time to appreciate. Wow. Lord yeah. knows that you can learn to hate it. Are we talking about time? When it gets down to desperate, yeah, I think it's a lot of nonsense. Because so, yeah, that the hate it line sticks out to me too because it takes time to appreciate. Mm -hmm. Lord knows that you can learn to hate it. Well, does it, the lady? The lady, um, money, the, the time. Probably the time you have to spend. Yeah, maybe. Because at that point, then you're you're just kind of being a dick then. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think he's referring to spending time on girl. Yeah. 
takes time to appreciate. Lord knows I can learn to hate it. I believe I've been there too. Well, you're not. Yeah, you're talking about you. So yeah. I think why there, I've been there too. Oh, yeah, you're right. That that line does stick out because the whole time we know it's you. <laughs> so you're telling us where you've been and then you're telling us also I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can tell. I've seen it through. Don't know. Yeah. It's a little bit like, oh, these sound good sung. Yeah. Don't look too closely at them. When it gets down to desperation, you make the best of the situation. Sure. I can tell. I've seen it through. That Those three lines, when it gets down to desperation, you make the best of the situation. I can tell. I've seen it through are probably good lines if the other three were different lines that <laughs> led into them. They're more that, cohesive. Because They're at more, least they make sense. They make sense. Uh, and they're, they're alone in that. Yeah. And they don't even necessarily, but they don't even necessarily make sense in this songs. Yeah, this is an atmospherics. It feels like, yeah, a little less um, well thought out, and you know, it's uh, early works. Yeah, so I think is a, there was a lot of like, oh, this sounds good. Yeah, X one, we got we got the studio for two hours. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I want. By the way, I watched that uh, Beatles documentary because we talked about it a little bit. Oh yeah, it's great. And this reminds me, you know, there would when they're working on a new song and John would constantly sing, make fun of lyrics to older songs of theirs. <laughs> great. And uh, did you watch that whole documentary yet? I've not watched it, yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah, because he will just, you know, make fun of lyrics he had uh, written for songs in the past just because he... He's embarrassed now or because, or he, or like any artist, he's like, well, I still like it, but it isn't as great as I thought. <laughs> sure. You know. And the you way know. he wrote lyrics always made me think that he thought lyrics were dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so he was making fun of lyrics as a delivery system a lot of times. Yeah, that's for sure. He did like, he liked nonsense words. And I love a lot of those lyrics too. Like, you know. Absolutely. Right. And uh, he also would just do, I mean, the, man, if there's any Billy Joel in that in this group, it's John, really, because he uh, definitely had a habit of like, like he, there's a song he wrote because he was watching a breakfast commercial and they said something in the breakfast commercial. He was like, oh, yeah, that'd be a good song. <laughs> he wrote a song. Right. And he would do a thing where sometimes some person that just happened to be in the studio. And they'd go, yeah, you know what a good line would be? It would be this. And he'd go, man, I'll put that in. He would do that too. <laughs> Great. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know how, you know, I don't know that, uh, you know, Da Vinci did that. I don't know if he was like, oh, what do you think I should put here? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit of a collage artist. Why yeah. not? Yep. And yet somehow great. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's artistry in recognizing what around you would be useful to you. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh Hard to argue with uh, such a vast yeah. amount of just good stuff. Uh, so though it seems like the day is wasted and the nights have been overdue, well, I'm the last of the big time spenders and I've been spending time on you. Okay. Though, <laughs> <laughs> though it seems the day well, is wasted. I don't know why. Nights have been overdue. I think that's like, uh, I go to work and I don't enjoy work. Yeah. I don't make much money. Yeah. So, but I'm still a big time spender because of the time that I'm spending on you. Not the money. The I don't have any money. Yeah. But I'm bothering you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so that should count for something. So is this a boyfriend explaining why they don't go to nice places? Well, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like he got yelled at for not ever spending money on her. And he's like, baby, 
I got something better than money. Yeah, way better. I'm spending time with you. Hey, time you're, you're intolerable. Hey. <laughs> the day sucks. The night is overdue. Yeah. But then it gets here and I, I spend all this time on you. And uh, can I borrow some, <laughs> 20 bucks to get home? Oh, Lord, I can't wait till we get to this lyric because talk about cliches. There's a cliche coming up and I'm, I'm getting ahead of us, but I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Funny to me that it's there. All right. All right. It's been so long since we got together. In between, it seems to take forever. But I'm a dreamer. I'll be there soon. Hmm. Yeah. It's a similar thing. Like, I have to go to work all day. I miss you when I'm at work. Yeah. Maybe the reason you don't get paid so much is because you're always, uh, you call me too much from work. Just, you're a dreamer. Just do your job. It takes time to appreciate all of those that you can learn to hate. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. I wish I knew what that meant. That's actually kind of interesting if there's something intentional here it takes time to appreciate all of those that you can learn to hate are is it is it the that it's important to appreciate the things that you hate because they motivate you <laughs> that could be something oh yeah uh, maybe or is you know you do yeah it's an old axiom you know you can't you can't have summer vacation unless you go back to school. Right. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? <laughs> <laughs> How can you have <laughs> man, they use, man, the English really love pudding. Oh, we were talking about that earlier because we were watching the Bake Off. And uh, it was a Christmas edition. And they started referring to the puddings as puds. I almost had to burn the house down. <laughs> it's a horrifying, anti-appetizing way to sure. describe something you're going to eat. Yeah. Eat that pud. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's that, something a bully makes you eat. That's like a a line from a reluctant porn. <laughs> <laughs> I know, eat that pud. All right, I'll eat the pud. Ugh. I didn't let me polish it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can call me the great pretender. <laughs> and in a way, it might be true. But I'm the last of the big time spenders. And I've been spending time on you. The great pretender. What is the origin of the phrase, the great pretender? It is capitalized in these lyrics. I noticed that. That's weird. Well, first of all, it's a song. It's the great pretender is a song unto itself, which is so it's funny to me that that's why it jumps out of me. I oh, don't yes. know, I don't know the song. Oh, yes. I'm the great pretender pretending that you're still around. Beautiful. My need is such, I pretend too much. I'm wearing my heart like a crown, pretending that you're still around. Ooh, that's thank you. That's very beautiful. Yeah. But who did that song? That is an oldie, so it's I way called it the, the platters. The platters, I think you're probably right. Did you look it up? Nope. Sue uh, mouthed it. Our research department. Our research department is killing it. It's a great song. It's a very lovely song from that era. Beautiful song. Yeah, there's a wow. few. That's a funny era, the 50s, because there's a few songs that are really impressive before everybody gets squeezed into three minutes and it becomes corporate rock. Yeah. And it happened so fast. There which was a cold is, rush. Yeah. Which is what made room for the Beatles, of course, because American rock was rock and roll. And then it was just garbage, pretty boys, 
with nice haircuts singing songs to ladies. And then that, and you know, you could argue that that's what happened with Nirvana too. You had, hey, we're rock and roll. And then it's like, well, you're makeup and hair. But <laughs> that's all you are. And then they showed up and went, man, I'm not doing makeup and hair. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah, this is good again. And then somebody came in and said, all right, this is the new makeup and hair. Yeah. Oh yeah, gosh. absolutely. Yep. Damn it, can't win. <laughs> <laughs> Hip hop has the same thing happen to it, but because old white people are still scared of it, it doesn't happen as badly. Yeah. It's not for us. No. <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah. I listen to a lot of it, and then I think, well, okay, this ain't for me, but I should listen to it just so I know what people are saying about stuff. I like to try to do that. Yeah. Like, I'll tell you something I did. Um, so for a long time, I convinced myself that I didn't like country music. And I think what I really didn't like was my mother playing any of her music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I thought, man, there's this whole world of music that's country music. I should listen to some of it because it's a part of Americana and I should start listening to classic. I should make room in my life for these things just to casually listen to. Absolutely. And I don't make a lot of room for it because I want to listen to what I like, but I think it's been healthy for me. And I do that with like really new stuff. I'm like, okay, I'll I'm going to listen to Billie Eilish. I'm going to, because I want to know what people think about things. Yeah. What are the youngs talking about? And you know what the funny thing is when you come right down to it, man, it's the same shit we were talking about. It's the same shit, but different angles on it. Absolutely. Uh, which is always fascinating. You know, the same thing has happened to country music now. It got corporatized and cooked down to a few essential elements. And now we listen to country music driving all the way to Ohio for like eight hours. And it's all, it's all the same, and it's a cold beer, dirt road, pickup yeah. truck, nothing to do Saturday night. I, I work uh, outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, great, but something new on the topic? I don't mind somebody singing about their pickup truck if they have like something relatively new to say about it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the. Uh, it's fun because I get to help people move. <laughs> that Nobody would be a great country. <laughs> Nobody sings that song. Oh damn it, dude! That would be a great song. I I would suggest the other tack to take is a a country song about a dude who loves his truck. Except I hate always getting asked to move, and that would be the the chorus. But I hate, and it would be a funny song. It would be like a Hank Williams Jr. song. Yeah. Dude, this is a good song. <laughs> this is a good song. Now, yeah. would it surprise you? I think I'm going to try to write that song, record it, and play it on one of our episodes. I think you should. That would be great. And then it's we co-wrote it because like, it was your idea, really. But yeah. I, really, story by. I'll take a story by credit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would, I would like something in there about how like I have truck payments to make. Uh, and you know you're just you're buying me pizza. I uh, I helped you move for six hours. <laughs> yep, it gets nine miles to the gallon. <laughs> have you ever owned a truck? I have very briefly before it got repoed. Oh. I I had a a Nissan pickup truck and I loved it. I, I loved it. I there am. is a thing about driving a pickup truck, but. That thing that you just mentioned, horrible. Oh, yeah. Every a-hole wants you to help them move a thing. Oh, yeah. And when you were like four in Tucson, people were moving every three weeks. Yep. Yep. And it sucked. Yeah. I got a truck for work. I And I was going to get a used truck because I didn't have that much money, but it was for a new job. So I was like, ah, I'll get a new truck. So I had a brand new truck. It was one of my first new cars I ever had. I, when I got it, it had six miles on it. <laughs> wow. Glorious. So that's just the miles getting it into the lot or whatever. Yeah. A couple of test drives. Yep. I really wanted a car with zero miles and they explained, yeah, you never get that. <laughs> you just don't ever get that. 
but I love that truck, but I also loved getting rid of it. Yeah, no doubt. I loved getting rid of it. And I loved not having room to help anybody move a thing. Oh, yeah. And then it was great when people would call you and be like, oh, I don't have the truck anymore. I don't have the truck anymore. Right, you can put your stereo in my Honda Fit. Yeah. Yeah, I want. traded in the um, truck for a you can go fuck yourself now. It's great. <laughs> it's great mileage. <laughs> just I got a sedan and I just uh, filled the back seat with bricks. <laughs> put anything back there. I bricked it up. <laughs> There's only room for me and my legs. Oh, son of a gun. Hey, that is a pretty good song, I will say. And like I said, it ends really nice and sweetly. Yeah. It's it funny how the lyrics ain't great. It's a little bit like a cotton candy where you're like, oh, this is nice. And it's gone. Yeah. And it's fine, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a shorty for sure. It doesn't, it doesn't hang around. Um, this was Turnstile? No, Street Life Serenade, right? Street Life Serenade, yeah. Third album. I think he was back in LA? Not sure. Yeah. Um, but it does really feel like, hey man, <laughs> you don't get to hang around in the studio all day. Yeah. But let's uh, crank these out. Yeah, this could easily be a, we have finished the album. Yeah, yeah you're the fun. piano man. People aren't going to remember Piano Man for three years. So, yeah, get something down on this wax, Jack. They're not going to be able to play Piano Man forever. Or, yeah, or will you don't want to be doing that song when you're 75, do you? <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Man, most and at that age, you also think, I don't even want to be 75. Yeah, I'm not gonna live that long, bro. And then you get to some now. Yeah, my friend right. uh, Vance, he got uh, his hip replaced. Right. That, that's all, something the young kids are doing all the time, getting their hips replaced. <laughs> sure, sure. And his favorite thing was they were like, the doctor literally said to him, said, "Yeah, this is really good. It's this is what it's made of. This is how good it is. That this will last you. This 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 hip will last thirty years, and that's all you're gonna need." <laughs> the doctor shouldn't say that, but he's right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great. Because if you live to be 100, well, you're, you're not walking around. Yeah. That's what I remember they used to say that uh, when AIDS medications first came out, a lot of gay men were being told, like, you know, something else will kill you before AIDS. What are you, 40? <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh well good uh, speak, speaking of aids have you noticed that nancy reagan is trending on twitter i have and i've tried to figure out what it's about i mean I, I know what it's about but i don't know where it came from yeah where did it come from do you know so which part can you help me i can which part do you want to know where it came from the, um, why the, blow, the blowjob allegations. Oh, man, that is old timey Hollywood from like tell all books from like uh, that lady who was on Falcon Crest. I can't remember her name. <laughs> right. But like, yeah, that's a, a good old timey rumor that's likely true. I don't see why not. That's the, you know what? Good for her. Yes. Um, if she yes. enjoyed it. It was somebody posted and it was like, I now have to process the information that you can be evil and give blowjobs. <laughs> I don't think that's news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but it was now, do you know why the dumb thread started? No, that I don't know. Somebody made one of those posts. You know, sometimes when somebody will post, this is Patrick Stewart at 60, and this is Wilford Brimley at 60. Who oh, do you sure. want to be? And they'll post something like that. Oh, yeah. So I saw the pic. Yeah, it was Madonna and Nancy Reagan. That's what it was. It was like, yeah. this, is Nan this is Madonna being trashy, and this is Nancy Reagan being all dignified. Right. Oh, and so somebody was like, 
Oh yeah, guess what? Yeah. She gave blowjobs. Like, yeah. Okay. And right and rightfully other people were like, I'd rather be Madonna and kind of still having fun and still, yeah. Sure. Madonna, by the way, I think is having the resurgence where people are coming around on her, which is interesting. On uh, her as a person or her musically? As a person. Because I because people do this thing where they'll decide a very a woman in charge of herself is a jerk. Yeah, and some young ladies will go. Ah, maybe she's not. Right. J Lo's having the same thing. People are suddenly like, "Hey, you know what?" People are always like, "J Lo's ruthless." I think J Lo just worked hard, and yeah. is a woman of color in a jackass society. Huh. 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 Worth looking into. Yeah, I you think know. I. For society, if society is watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think society subscribes. Do they, are they on? Good. That's a, that's a good chunk of the audience. Right. Uh, <laughs> the gays are always right. Yep. If the gays like her, then shut up. Yep. Cher's great. Miley Cyrus is one of the new uh, patron, patron saints of the gay community. And... Right. She's also active within the community and good for her. Good for her. And look where she came from. It could break your heart. Yep. Yep. Good. That dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's a nice guy. I bet he's a nice guy. The song isn't terrible. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I don't know why people got so upset about it. I think it was one of the, it had a Macarena quality to it. It was just like it's a dumb song that but it's catchy yeah and it did have a dance yeah and you're eventually going to be mad that you liked it because it's dumb but catchy so eventually you blame the writer yeah you know uh bare naked ladies who i to my grave i'm gonna tell you are a great band yeah uh, but their big hit is one week and people will run their mouths i remember somebody was like Oh, it's funny is that's not even a good song and i was like yeah it is and i decided to be really argumentative i don't know what you're saying <laughs> it's got a really good melody it's funny lyrics yeah it's sung well what what are you even saying i never have fully understood the uh it's a hit so it's bad yeah mentality i had a lot of those like it's like a punk rock mentality i guess but I'm like, okay yeah it's uh, and I don't like it, and it's bad are two different things. Yeah, so too many people because everyone's the star of their own movie. They can't understand that. Yeah, that's true. Like, no, but it's bad. No, most people think it's good. So most people are wrong. Yeah, maybe it's you, Dave. <laughs> and it's all right that you don't like it, but it's I'm fine. Yeah, it's not. Hey. It's not bad. Let people hate things. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been enjoying the hell out of hating things. Hey, uh, I unlocked a joke. I unlocked a stand-up joke this week that has been perplexing me for a year. Oh, fun. So I had this joke, and I'll tell you the good version real quick. Sometimes when I'm sad, I get sad sometimes. I'll go to a pet store where there are, when there's an adoption date, and I'll pet the puppies. And it'll right. just cheer me up. When I'm really sad, I go to an orphanage. <laughs> Hi, right. Billy. No, I'm not taking you home. This is for me, not you. Don't be selfish. <laughs> Great. That's a, good joke. That's a good joke. That's a good joke. Good the time. version I was telling for so long was wrong. And I took me time to unlock it. Those are the best. Yep. I love cracking a, a goodie. Now, aren't you disappointed sometimes when you figure out what's wrong with a particular joke and you're like why is nine times out of ten the solution always the same solution and i just took a while to come around to it yeah yes i do i mean i'm writing jokes every fucking day yeah on deadline so I, it happens to me all the time and this happens a lot too um write the jokes put it together we go to the taping seth is doing the monologue and uh, my joke is coming up and I'll go, oh, shit, you know what would have been better? 
ah, well, oh, I'll, I'll do that with a different setup tomorrow if I remember. And then you don't write it down and you're like, you totally forgot that great dwarf joke. <laughs> oh, circle. It was a full circle. Yeah. Now behind you. Yeah. Is uh, the Ghost Rider, is it not? That is Ghost Rider. That is Ghost Rider. And that is not a franchise I'm very familiar with. I did see that movie. Yeah. So I know that he is a, a motorcycle fellow. Yeah. And that he was played by Nick Cage in the movie. That's right. And you know what? It's actually not a bad movie. The second one's terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the second one's Gotta terrible. get it right the first time. Huh? Got to get it right the first time? Yeah. Is it that song? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, he's got a head. On, uh, when you wake up in the morning with your head on fire and your eyes too buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Big shot. Gonna be a big shot, baby. Oh man! See, if you get it right away, it's good. If it takes a while, it's good because it's big shot. Both things are good. Yep. Both versions are good. <laughs> but yeah, I, and and who else is a big shot? But uh, you know, Johnny Blaze. I think that was his name. Johnny Blaze. It was a Marvel thing for sure. It was like, I think DC didn't do that as much. That was definitely a Marvel thing where the guy who became Dr. Octopus, it happened to be that his name was Audio Otto Octavius. <laughs> Fantastic. And there were so many villains like that. Yeah. I was like, they never had a chance. <laughs> never had a chance. Um. I get a couple of trivia things. One is just a thing you should look at on billyjoel.com. There's a, a link there to a video of Dave Grohl and his buddy doing a cover of Big Shot. Oh, fantastic. And it's fucking great. I love Dave Grohl. He's uh, dreamy. Yeah. Who does not love Dave Grohl? I don't know. I feel like maybe Kurt didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny, um, Dave Grohl in interviews when he talks about Kurt Cobain reminds me of Paul McCartney talking about John. Interesting. Because he's going through the same arc. There was the, yeah. the pissed off arc when it happened. Yep. And, and the softening of time and you remember what was good about it. And, uh, and then just as you get older, you're just, man, I wish she was still here. It you know all right. boils down to that. Which yeah, is, at the end of the day. Um, man, I'm gonna the, the real trivia question. Um, it, we get it's starting to get a little esoteric, of course. Um, do you remember that in 1992, Garth Brooks did a, a live TV special? Very rare for artists to do anything like that, but they were like, "All right, NBC is all yours." I think it was NBC. And he did a two-hour concert called This is Garth Brooks. It was an enormous ratings grab. Uh, he did 15 of his songs. He did one song by the Georgia Satellites, and he covered one Billy Joel song. Which song? She's Always a Woman. Nope. Um... Um, you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's uh, up tempo. Um, let's see. Um, still rock and roll to me. <laughs> no, that would have been fun. Real close. Um, big shot. Oh, you may be right. Oh, okay, you may be right. That's a great song. It's a great song. Which we have covered. Which we have covered. We have covered that song well. You and I have covered it, and Garth Brooks has covered it. <laughs> well, that's cool. I, that's actually might be worth looking up too, just to see. It's and if you're curious about that, there are lots of videos of him covering other Billy Joel songs for other occasions. He clearly just likes Billy Joel. He's a big Billy Joel fan, which is another thing to kind of like about Garth Brooks. You know, he's a delight. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, what no. happened? 
Something horrible happened. Okay. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, my watch doesn't understand. <laughs> Everything's gone to hell. All right. You, you got us a sweet song for next week? I do. What you got? Hope we haven't already done it. I don't think we have. But I think, uh, speaking of uh, that whole uh, J-Lo hating and the Madonna hating, let's do Modern Woman. Modern Woman. Yeah, man. Done. Let's do Modern Woman. Oh, you know what's funny? I have terrible handwriting. And uh, <laughs> That is funny. It is, right? <laughs> you do that one. I have, yeah, that's my closer. <laughs> but I just wrote down the name of Modern Woman. And one of the reasons I have horrible handwriting is because I was a contrarian as a little kid and refused to do the little exercises. That would have mm -hmm. given me decent handwriting. Sure. But every so every now and then I'll write a word and it'll look like it's not written in my handwriting. It'll look like a different guy wrote it. I just wrote modern woman and the W came out to almost a perfect Wonder Woman font. Ooh. Mm. Now, I don't think that's as funny as I thought it was. It's odd. It's I mean it's odd. hey, it's no dwarf. It's no dwarf. <laughs> and thank God. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm going to order a, a VHS tape of you writing that word. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, when I die, my, my grandkids will find it and think I wasn't funny. Uh, well, yeah, years from now, they'll be working on a show and they'll do a reference to Jim Bruce's W. And they're like, I don't know what that is. That is. Sorry, man. I'm 27. Yeah. I don't know what that is, bro. 27 I, and i'm not one of the eight people who watched <laughs> that episode <laughs> i'm no bruno mars <laughs> who's bruno mars they'll say and then you're like okay oh, here we go again <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody you did such a good job watching the show uh if you think my ceiling fan is cool say so in the comments yeah i'll say it now and let's see if anybody agrees with me because i do think it's cool Thanks, man. <laughs>